And welcome once again to the Liberty Lounge Podcast. I'm Johnny B, and I'm hanging out with these two knuckleheads. Out there in California is Anthony, the arm scholar, waving away in his red shirt, looking fantastic. Also looking great is Jared on my left of guns and gadgets. All right, fellas. It is wild out there. And I know we always say that. Like, is it like every every three months, we're like, this is the wildest thing I've ever seen. Three months later, wildest thing. The president got shot in the face. It's <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, and then the Secret Service said they couldn't do anything because the roof was sloped. Yeah, yeah, the slopey roof. And then you saw the memes come around with the uh, the cow that jumped on the farm roof. The that was cow slopey. walking yeah. around. On, yeah, on my show today, the cow was walking around the roof. And over top of it, they had that moron director of the Secret Service who guarded Cheetos before this talking over top of it. We made an executive decision for the safety of our team. And that cow's just walking around out there. <laughs> Anthony, what's the craziest thing you've seen come out of this in the last several days? Oh my gosh! How do you even pick? Like, like how how do you pick? Um, yeah, the slope roof one is pretty hilarious, and the memes going on around that are hilarious. And it's like when my FBI agents come for me, I'm just gonna hide on my slope roof and all these things. It's just like it's 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 insane. Um, I think for our community, one of the crazy things about it was obviously the demo ranch shirt that that threw everybody for a spin. That was. What you, let's, let's, jump, let's jump straight into that because that is yeah. one I've, I've had a lot of people mention it to me. I've had a lot of folks go, Johnny, that was a YouTube guy, wasn't it? But I haven't talked. I haven't talked. We haven't talked about this and I haven't talked to anybody in our circle. Where are we at with that? Because I've not talked to anybody in the industry about it yet. Uh, Matt addressed it Monday, Monday morning. Um, he put out a video, um, you know, just distancing himself, just saying, look, we sell shirt T-shirts. On the internet, we don't do background checks. You can't vet people buying T-shirts. That's all it is. If somebody bought a T-shirt, um, he did say it was unfortunate that you know there were three names mentioned in the the incident. It was President Trump, the shooter, and Matt Carricker from Demo Ranch. Um, yeah. And you can see he was visibly upset about that, but he seems to be uh, doing all right. There is no bad publicity unless you're unless it's something with a kid where you're hurting a child. They, they say they say there's no such thing as bad publicity. Anthony, is this bad publicity or just kind of is it's just a, a dumb thing? He was wearing a shirt. Matt Carricker uh, dealt with it and moved on. Yeah, I think it's one of those unfortunate things. Uh, I think there's still so many question marks out there. Um, anybody, uh, it, it's also interesting because we all know Demo Ranch's content itself is very not political. It's just not political at all. He doesn't really take a hard stance on anything. Obviously, he probably has a political lean because he's dealing with firearms itself, but it's not like he jumps in and, and talks about politics or is pushing for a specific candidate or, you know, says anything about even about the ATF or anything like that. I think the most political thing he said recently was about some of the YouTube policies. Um, so it's just unfortunate. I think it's there's so many other things going on with the story. We'll probably never really get answers about why this individual had this specific shirt. I, I it, uh, To me, it's suspect. I know we went back and forth kind of on some of our group chats um, I find it highly suspect to believe that this guy was such a big fan of Demo Ranch to the point where he bought this sh shirt and then committed this crime and this attempted assassination. So I, it doesn't pass the smell test to me. If anything, I think maybe maybe his dad had the shirt and maybe took the shirt to blend in. I think a lot of people think he just had the shirt to blend in. And I think that's probably more where I'm leaning. I don't know. Johnny, what do you think? You're more conspiratorial yeah. than me. No, no, no. I, I, I'm not more conspiratorial. I live in reality while the rest of y'all just float through time and space. Uh, as long as your cell phone's <laughs> charged and your, you know, your Candy Crush app is working, y'all just float around. <laughs> this guy lives in reality. Uh, I think this, I, I think, I think we'll never know the truth on any of it. We want to thank the sponsor of today's show, Patriot Mobile. For 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. And when I say only, trust me, they're the only one. Patriot Mobile is a new supporter of the Liberty Lounge, and we are proud to partner with them. Patriot Mobile offers dependable nationwide coverage, giving you the ability to access all three major networks, which means you get the same coverage you've been accustomed to without funding the left. When you switch to Patriot Mobile, you're sending the message that you support free speech, religious freedom, the sanctity of life, the Second Amendment, and our military veterans and first responder heroes. Their 100% U.S.-based customer service team makes switching easy. Keep your number, keep your phone, or upgrade. Their team will help you find the best plan that meets your needs. Just go to patriotmobile.com slash liberty or call 972-PATRIOT. You can get free activation when you use the offer code 
liberty. Join me and make the switch today. Yeah. Here's where I'm at. And I can pick any direction that I want to go. I'm going to choose aliens. The the hard truth, is, not even hard truth, just the truth is there are ships out there. They've now changed the names to UAPs. Used to be UFOs. They're out there. We know they're out there. 50,000 sightings a year. We know they are non-American technology. That That's about all we know for sure. But we know they're there. And yet the government for 50 years has thrown swamp gas at us or thrown nonsense. And they, they would just wave this hand. Hey, believe this, believe this, and slap you with the other hand. And they expect us to believe whatever they say. And it is, I, I could pick 100, literally 100 other examples. And X happens. And the government says, Y is the reason. Don't follow X, follow Y. And I think where I'm at with all of this is they honestly expect us, and you and I were to get together last night and a bunch of people asked me what I thought. And I thought, I think they are still operating like it's 1961. Mm -hmm. And they can say, you know, it was a sloped roof. We couldn't get the guys up there. It was a safety issue. Really unfortunate. We are so glad President Trump was okay. Let's move on. And the rest of us go, a bull crap, bull crap, <laughs> oh, bull crap. I'm not buying it. I'm suggesting, Jared, they've gotten away with just lying to us about literally everything that they think they can do it again. And, and America is wiser than we've ever been. Yeah, people are starting to wake up. I mean, uh, there's a lot of people. I'll just say this and people will freak out in the comments, I'm sure. Did we actually land on the moon? That's something that many people think the government was lying, right? Made in a Hollywood basement. I'm not, I'm not, I know the answer to this. I have it documented. I, and I could rattle for the next three episodes about this. Not today, Satan, not today. We're not dealing with the moon today. Yeah. Cause it's, cause we didn't go there. Um, there's all kinds of things they <laughs> you about from, uh, you know, weapons of mass dis destruction to, uh, just take this shot and 19, uh, boosters, you'll be okay. But Joe Biden, who is triple vaccinated and 19 boosters, he's going to lose the presidency over it. Yeah. He's got COVID right now and might back out this weekend. It's, they just think that they're dealing with a bunch of idiots, but because I think of, of these things, cell phones and where news is instant now, I think it's tougher for people to you know, by the BS. Joe Rogan says that we're smarter than we used to be, that because of COVID and because we know, like we have figured out paper masks don't work, uh, the vaccines don't work, Donald Trump's own warp speed bullcrap didn't work, and that uh, Joe Rogan, he posits that we're smarter than we were, we're more skeptical of the big than we've ever been, and whether it's big government, big tech, big pharma, or big organizations like the WEC, J uh, Anthony, do you feel like you're smarter coming out of the 2020, 2021, and 22 nonsense? You feel like you're a little more wise or a little more uh, careful of what you believe? Uh, I don't know if it, like smarter is the right word. I, I think what you said is more skeptical. I think everybody, that veil of COVID in that whole era and just like how willing our government is to do certain things and just like how close we are to everything just completely unraveling. I think that veil was lifted from everybody. And through that whole period, we were told so many lies and we were forced to stay inside. You know, it's, it's been different too. Like here in California, we we felt things probably a lot different than you guys did over in Tennessee or Massachusetts. Massachusetts is probably just as bad as California. But Have you guys been allowed uh, to come out yet? I mean, I was <laughs> recently flying. I mean, I just recently got back from Portland and you, the amount of people wearing masks still in Portland was, it blows my mind when I go to Sacramento it blows my mind. Like people are still acting as if we're in the height of it. Um, so, I mean, there's still that group, but I think most people that veil was lifted. And I think that's then led to when you, like Johnny said, you have this type of incident that pops up and automatically everybody like immediately, everybody's like, how did this guy get that close? And traditionally they might want to just sweep that on the rug, but everybody's like, wait, 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 you mean this kid with the rifle bear crawled and got within 150 yards of the pre the former president during his speech with hundreds and hundreds of lot. I mean, I think now we just, that type of stuff that doesn't pass the smell test, it just doesn't fly. It just, it, we automatically are skeptical because we just have lived under, I don't know, this weird uh, simulation over the last four years. And I think I text you guys automatically that all I need is for, 
aliens to touch down and I hit bingo on my bingo card. Like they, we're just are living in a weird time. So I think, yeah, I think you're right. We already have, and the government won't release the information. I'm not saying it. I'm just saying, what if I do think this, maybe sometimes the pendulum swings too far. Okay. uh, COVID hits. We all wise up a little bit. We pay a little better attention. And now we realize we can see the, the, the trees for the forest. But I think sometimes we swing too far. With this one, people went a little nuts online. Right. There is a showman. He's some sort of provocateur. He calls himself JFK Jr. online. He's like Mexican or Venezuelan, uh, Dominican Republic, something that doesn't look like me. And he does not look like JFK Jr., but that's what he calls himself. He was the dude in the weird hat. I don't know if y'all saw that up in the stands behind Trump. And my phone blew, blew up for the next two days. Johnny, JFK Jr. is alive. Uh, no, his name is like Santiago, and like really, his name is like Santiago. You can find his name. I know nothing about him other than it's not JFK Jr. And people are digging and looking. The one lady that held up her phone and didn't yeah. flinch during the whole thing, they're saying that she is FBI or CIA or something like that because she the looks water like this tower, one. The water tower stuff. The water tower thing. Mr. Guns and Gear said there's no evidence of that. No. I think it's healthy to to question everything. Unless your mama told you, don't believe it. Even if you see it, don't believe it. Right. And I think maybe the pendulum has swung too hard. Jared, you've been seeing like crazy theories. Granted, the government's lying to us. And granted, this thing is fishy as hell. But I think some people are looking too hard. Yeah, I think there's also, this is just me being, you know, negative about stuff. Not you. <laughs> there's there's also that uh, element of people who are going to make something knowing that it's not true to put it out there just to see how many clicks they can get, how vi- viral they can go, because that is the world we live in now online, uh, which is why you need to work harder uh, to, to vet. The one I saw last night that when I watched it was like, there's no way this is real was the this, this apparently it slowed down the video and you can see a bullet hole appear in Trump's uh, ear. It's, there's just people will just do whatever they you can. Didn't, you didn't think that was a real video? Uh, no. I, I haven't seen a is. breakdown of it. No, mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't think it's real. Uh, just, just my personal opinion. Don't think it's real. I only saw, we haven't talked about this, and I saw the video and I, we, were, we were sitting at that get together last night and I'm just scrolling through. And I saw the video, I watched it about 50 times and watched that his, if people didn't see it, it's a, it's a slow-mo of maybe the second the bullet hit his ear and it just appears, which would be, you would think that would be very bad uh, editing, but I'm wondering if it's just a, a, a frame situation where it's, you know, the, the bullet's going faster than the frame rate. I don't know. People that, that, that dig in this stuff, they can parse that out in about yeah. 30 seconds. I don't know. Anthony, are people going too far? Are they looking for too much? Are you looking for too much? How do we negotiate these waters? I don't know. I don't, I'm not digging. I'm not doing conspiracy. I just, like Jared said, if something pops up on X or whatever online. I, I'll take a look at it. Um, you know, the bullet hole thing could just be a frame rate issue. I, I think it's healthy. Like Jared said, I'd rather people be overly skeptical than just accepting everything that the government says you know you i would rather you're not doing sorry you just said you're not doing conspiracies which is it are you not doing conspiracies or you believe in what jean pierre says at the white house no that's i would rather people be highly skeptical i'd rather people be skeptical of stuff than just accepting what the government says what i what i said um i think it's i think that's probably healthier i mean could you imagine a situation where everybody just would be like Oh, Secret Service says the roof is sloped. Okay, that is what it is. I'd rather people be like, uh, that doesn't make sense. And let's look at all these other things. Um, you know, we we even with the bullet stuff, automatically we saw uh some people on the left were saying, Oh, he actually didn't get shot. It was a fragment from the teleprompter. You saw that go around. So I would rather people be looking at all the stuff, and I would hope that we have enough intelligence out there to discern what is real and what isn't. But also, I don't think we're going to get all the answers anyways. So I don't know. People have fun. I'd rather have people have fun online. So back in back in my day, back in the 80s, there was a thing called the armchair quarterback. And what's funny now is everybody is an armchair everything. So yeah. this week, everybody is an armchair ballistics expert. I had yeah. somebody who barely knows how to fire a gun sit down and explain sniper tactics to me the other night. I mean, yeah. I, there's a guy I've had so many people start explaining to me tactics and SWAT stuff. And all about ballistics and like Anthony's point, no, that wasn't really a bullet. That was a fragment from, and everybody thinks they know everything. This is a consequence of the cell phone and social media. And in social media, it's the first time in human history where the individual has a voice 
in the masses and everybody's voice matters. And what they do is they'll on ESPN during literally during an NBA game, ESPN will have regular fans tweets going, oh, my Lord, that was so amazing. LeBron James is amazing. And it matters. And now because of that, everybody feels empowered. Jared, you are probably the only dude that I know. I mean, I know some others outside of here, but in Johnson City that I hang out with regularly, actual SWAT experience. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you did it for at least two weeks. <laughs> and you have also done SWAT stuff inside the, is it called a cordon, cordon, whatever, the line, the barricade of elected officials. Overall, how did, how did that team do once they figured out the threat? Based on what you're able to gather in, it only took them 29 minutes to allow Trump to be shot. What do you think? Um, well, I'm glad you asked that because I we, we have a friend in common who is former Secret Service, and I met with that person uh, yesterday quite a bit about this stuff. And when there's events with people, it, it's, tough to, it's tough to realize because – you would think everything's dynamic between the federal and state and local law enforcement. And it's not, it never has been. It's always a cluster. Uh, typically when there is a secret service, uh, you know, security event going on, they ha they'll have like one person who is the radio with locals or state. And they're typically, I mean, they're not on the same radio because the federal radio system isn't the same as a state system and the state cops aren't usually on the same radio uh, frequencies that the locals are on. And that's always been a problem. They were supposed to fix it. They were ordered to fix that after September 11th, and that never happened. Um, so what's very plausible was there was a communication delay from when the locals actually saw this cat and tried to get a hold of Secret Service, but couldn't do it right away. So that is a cause of delay. In 29 minutes, do you think they could have just um, got on Google and found out the Secret Service number and <laughs> found it over, maybe hollered and said there's a guy on the with a range finder? Not an excuse, but a plausible delay. Okay, so that say. was plausible. plausible. We got a delay, delay there. What else? Um, that building that the shooter was on was a, uh, a local counter sniper team's responsibility. So I don't, I don't know what they do out there as far as their, their makeups. Maybe it was a, a, a county team or a regional team, but it, regardless, that was not a federal counter sniper team assigned to that building. And they were, they were okayed to be in the second floor of that building overwatched through a window, which is okay if, and only if you got somebody else watching your, you know, your six behind you and on a higher ground, because you're supposed to keep the high ground. That didn't happen. And there were police in that building when this person was bear crawling up there. Um, so what, what I've seen done in the past is if you don't go onto a rooftop for a real, re a real reason, not a, you know, this kind of slopey, uh, you would secure the exterior. You put, you know, people on all four corners or two opposite corners to keep a visual on all entrances and exits. That way you, once the building's secure, it's secure. And that didn't happen either. Um, there were no guys or gals out patrolling. And usually when there's a, a security perimeter set up, there's every 50 yards, there's at least a person standing there. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. Uh, there was a letter that went out today by uh, Senator Hawley that said that magnetometers weren't used and how they're typically uh, done. And and the uh, you'll see pins on people at, at events that'll you know show what type of clearance they have. And they didn't do that. There's just a lot of, it's almost like whatever could have gone wrong did go wrong. And then there were like a lot of assumptions that this would be safe. And they were maybe made some decisions based off of that assumption that backfired. I think the, the best meme that I've seen out of this, to your point, a cluster bomb of mistakes, human errors, uh, like just sin, maybe not sins of commission, but sins of omission, just yeah. guys messed up and they didn't do their stuff. Unacceptable, Unacceptable levels with a monster cruising through the crowd. My, that's your, your point today. Mm -hmm. My favorite meme that's come out of this is that, that we are at a crossroads with this whole assassination. We got to decide, is the government so incompetent that they allow one of the most important people in our country to get shot in the face or did they actually conspire to do it? And that's the only two options. That's the, the, oh, we're at the point now, the only two options, the government did it or the government allowed it to happen. Yep. And there's nothing else. Anthony, what's your gut telling you? Oh, I don't know. Because I think there's valid evidence. I mean, we know the government's highly incompetent. Um, we haven't talked about this on the podcast. What about the DEI hires? Like, 
they're just oh, we're very, there. there's it's very, li- there's very literally incompetence like that was put <laughs> into his own service. Um, so, and, but then also like, it just doesn't pass the smell test that that many counter snipers, that much law enforcement with that many people point like in the public pointing this individual out, like he was not stopped beforehand. Um, and then there's rumors going on about certain comments online for maybe a counter sniper person who was told to stand down, but even, you know, that we don't really know if that's true or not. So I, I think, I don't know. sorry, I think that one's been debunked. I believe was that one debunked already. Yeah. And so it's yeah. hard. It's so hard to keep up. Was the, the, the hint. Yeah. Yeah. It's so hard to keep up of what, like all with all the stuff, even when it first broke, there was automatically people putting up like, this is the individual. This is the one individual with the picture of a person. It wasn't that person. Everybody um, wants or to maybe, viral. maybe it wasn't that person or maybe, well, I mean, who, <laughs> who again, who knows? Um, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm leaning more towards just pure government incompetence. Um, I think the government loves to sell. Like, and we talk about this all the way, all the time in the second community, the government love and the people in power love to sell like, Hey, we're here from the government. We're here to help where well, you can protect you. They can't protect diddly crap. They can't, they can't protect anybody no matter how hard they try. Um, and it's getting even worse because of weird DEI and woke politics bleeding into the government itself. And we can go in and talk about the DEI people and the bunny hop people who can't even holster their, their guns. Um, yeah, it's, it's a mess. Like, the, like all the DEI hires and to be clear, I don't have a problem with a woman in secret service. I don't care. Is she strong enough to drag a 194 pound man out of the line of fire? Uh, maybe if she, if she is Trump's heavier than 195. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> I, called, I called Trump fat on my channel one time and I got lambasted. Trump's a fat guy. It's okay. He likes cheeseburgers and, and, and diet Coke. And he's a, he's a golfer. He's active. Yeah. He's doing pretty good for 80. He's doing no, he's pretty a, good. He's a big dude. He's yeah. like six, three, six, four. He's a large frame male. Yeah, he's, but he's tubby. Yeah. He's, I'm not saying he's shredded, but you, you absolutely need to have people who are around the principal. Uh, to be able to handle the principal. And one thing I did learn from our friend in the Secret Service is they don't have a policy as far as height. Like if and what we always did, if we had people on, on the team that were, were two foot eight and you're dealing with somebody who's six, six is like, hey, all right, we're going to swap you out. But this person, um, and then, you know, it, it didn't matter if people's feelings were hurt back then. Things are going to change. I think yeah. things will change because of this. Uh, you had these DEI hires. Again, I don't have a problem with a woman on, on stage and I'd say it's probably a bad idea overall. There may be some Ronda Rousey out there that's a badass. I don't know, but that's not inherently why. I'm also against 140-pound pencil-necked pansies up there, dudes up there who couldn't be like, stop it, bad guys. Stop it, you kids with SSRIs. Go away. <laughs> and I have a problem with that too. However, these three women that I don't know which one is funnier. Y'all tell me which one is funnier. You got the one that has the sunglasses on and she's kind of the hot blonde oh, and Jackie tug gets him. Yeah. Gets, <laughs> gets Trump into the car and then smacks the car, turns around and straightens her jacket. And then she's ready to fight again. Puts the shades back. She got on. the shades on, tucks the jacket and you can just hear the Avengers music going. <laughs> da, 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 da. Then you got Melissa McCarthy, Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> yeah. one. And man, she's, she's just cruising along and she's walking with the team and she's crouched down walking. She's already five, five, but she's crouched down and just walking while she crawls. Can't get her holster in her gun into her holster. And so she just gives up and goes back to on the ready and pretends for another, then comes back all while chewing her gum. And then you got the extra hot one that just squatted down into the twerk position, ready to go. Anthony, who's your favorite of those three? I think uh, Melissa McCarthy, because she's, she got the most memes. I think, um, I think that one is hilarious because again, the, the crouching and not being able to actually cover him, but then everybody else is covering. Him. She's just like in the background, not, not, <laughs> not doing literally, anything. Yeah. Literally screaming. What's going on. Was it? She's screaming. Yeah. What's going on or what do we do? I what are we doing? Like, yeah. What are we, what are we, are we doing? doing? Yeah. Screaming. Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah, you're supposed to know what you're doing. Yeah. You, so that you think funny. Her training would just go bang. Here's my training. This is a story. I've never told this story before ever, but I think about, I think about this story probably once a month. I've never told it in uh, 24 years ago. No, let's well, back up. 35 years ago, I went through the Boy Scouts training. Uh, so it's 40 years ago. Boy Scouts training on first aid. 
And I can remember Camp Davy Crockett down in Bulls Gap, Tennessee. We had this training and something would happen and somebody go, oh, my God, I lost my arm. There goes my leg. And uh, Judy chopped my leg off. And whoever was in the training, they had two things they had to do. They had to find a responsible person and go, you, go call 911. And then you go back, then you go and you do all your stuff. In the woods with no cell phones. Yeah. In the woods with no cell phones, call 911. But that's what they told Find us. a landline. Find a landline somewhere. Somehow that stuck with me. Fast forward 15 years and I'm cruising through, driving my truck through downtown Burlington, Vermont. That woman I was married to was sitting next to me. And right, this this homeless guy ish home it's Burlington. You don't know if they're homeless or what. They're just hippies, been <laughs> eating Ben and Jerry's ice cream. You never know. But this skinny homeless ish guy on a bicycle comes cruising through a right through right through the median, and a car comes and slaps him, and he hits his head hits the roof of the car. His legs come up over and kicks himself in the head like a scorpion. Scorpion. And then he unravels, flops back down on the ground. I slam the car into park, jump out, saw a pedestrian, and I went, you, call 911. <laughs> the first thing I did, and he goes, I'm an EMT. I'll take care of it, man. <laughs> and my point is this, that, that you're supposed to have this training inside of you. She's at the point where obviously a DEI hire. And the president, the asset, the cheese, literally gets shot in the face. She goes down on her knees and screams, what are we doing, Jared? Is she not better trained than that? Uh, yeah, yeah, they are better trained than that. And that's the that's the bad part. And one of the first posts I put out was, you know, there were a lot of things that probably and did, actually did go wrong there. But the worst part was that uh, a, a few of the agents did not fall back on their training and appeared to panic. And you can, you cannot have that as, as anybody who is tasked with protecting somebody of importance. So never mind Donald Trump or, or, uh, you know, a pre an acting, a current president. Um, you just can't have people who panic. You know, the OODA loop is a thing. And if you have never been up shit's Creek, you cannot, like, you'll never know how your body will react until you're in that type of scenario. And these two and a half, uh, ladies didn't. Uh, didn't respond and didn't. Did you didn't, call the ladies two and a half ladies? Half, that's <laughs> funny, man, 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 <laughs> man, manly man. Yeah, they didn't respond. They didn't fall back on their training at all. I absolutely love it. I think I think the memes the memes could not be better. Uh, I think that I suspect I think there will be change come out in Secret Service policy. It'll be hard because it is a federal agency and all federal. They are its prepositions and DEI hires. Anthony, you think this pushes at all? Does it push back on DEI? Um, I think in some, we're already seeing, uh, what company was it that recently let go of all their DEI hires? Microsoft. There was some Microsoft. Yeah. So I think that's definitely happening. Um, I think when Trump was at the RNC, there was videos were going around, like you didn't see a single female in his protective detail at the RNC. Well, yeah, it's um, a different, it's a different, uh, yeah. he has a different team now because now he's the official nominee. So he has a bigger, uh, detail now. Yeah. But I mean, even with that. Not a single one. You didn't see yeah. <laughs> not a single female when on this one, there was like three that we saw. There's probably more. Um, so I think it is going to change some of those things. I and mean, obviously a lot of their policies are changing. Uh, RFK Jr. is getting his own now because of Trump. Um, so I think it's, I don't know, but is is it just going to be a cyclical thing? Like it's just, you know, everybody's going to be mad at the DEI hires right now, but it's still going to bleed in because obviously right now you still have the head of, the Secret Service, who's the director of the Secret Service, still going to push the policies. And we'll see if there's any accountability that's even taken for this stuff. But I mean, I don't know. It's there's just so many unanswered questions. Like we haven't even probably touched on half the things that, that have gone on with this situation. Um, I don't know, Johnny, do you think I, I, I don't know? I'm curious really what you guys think. Do you think that they're going to move away from using DEI hires or, or certain females in some of these details. I think for Trump specifically, you're probably not going to see it as much anymore, but. Uh. I think Marxism has Marxism has taken roots in America to the point where it's thriving and growing. And one of the hallmarks is get that woman out of the kitchen, get her away from her own children. And she is a man and can do whatever a man can do. And that's a complicated layered issue, but that's a short version. And I think it's here. And if you just suggest that maybe a woman shouldn't be in self-protection, I am suggesting it. Probably not. It's not rigid for me. Maybe there's a, like I said, maybe a Ronda Rousey out there that's a badass. 
our mutual friend, I, I don't know if I think we're giving this too much away. She's a female. Yeah. And uh, she's a Secret Service female. Uh, and a badass. And a badass. I would go to war with her every she day. She protect me right now. No problem. So it's not a hard rule. I would say the average woman should not be in self-protection of presidents. The average dude shouldn't either, though. I mean, I think we need grown men who yeah. eat eat lightning and crap thunder. I think to Anthony's question is is DEI getting pushed back? I don't know. I watch a lot of Rogue, a lot of Rogue, and a lot of Jordan Peterson, a lot of these folks that are cultural pushers and cultural filters. Uh, I think people are starting to push back. I think the the pushback that I saw during Pride Month in June, I saw, I saw a lot of pushback. People are freaking tired of seeing black Santa Claus in a wheelchair with an Asian uh, elf next to them. And they're all gay, transgender and bi. And I think it's just because they have to because of the what I forget what it's called for the to be able to get the government money. Anthony, what's called when you need the government money? Larceny? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I no, I can't think of it. Yes, yeah, larceny. Score. No, you have to have a certain <laughs> score. Yeah, uh, I don't think you're, yeah, you've yeah, got to be able to show system, that, your, yeah. that your company is inclusive. And I think there was a lot of pushback. Larceny. 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 That's great. <laughs> you try to have a conversation and this is where we devolve to. But no, I do think I think there's pushback. I don't think DEI is here to stay. I think communism might be here to stay in some ways. Jared, is DEI here to stay forever? In some factors, absolutely. Uh, it will not come out of the federal government until it is absolutely rooted out. Uh, and that starts with a, a not just a change in who is the president, but a, a change in who is leading every single facet of the government, every three-lettered agency. The, it, it would be a massive, um, I guess, you got to smoke them out. Like, for no 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 easier way to say it, you got to smoke them out. And it's, it's gonna take, it took a long time to get here. And it's going to take a long time to get rid of it. And you have to stay focused. And, I, and the, the problem with that is, is that, you know, Trump's got four years if he wins. You can't guarantee Republicans stay in in, uh, in the corner office. And even if they do, who is it? Do they favor DEI stuff? So there's, you can't really do a lot of that in a, in a three and a half year period. It's almost like we've come too far to go back. And I think reversing that stuff might require, I don't know what's the right word, but it might rhyme with revolution. But I did not say that here, nor do I think that. I have, right, I have a question. I have a question. Actually, Johnny. So this, and we will have to decide um, for the audience themselves. We don't know in what order we're going to release these podcasts, but we did a podcast, I think like a day before this happened, talking about our top five things we would grab if, you know, things went sideways in the nation. And literally a day later, this news hits, our group chats are blowing up. Johnny, did you rethink at all your can opener and all of those thought processes you have because i know me when when i when you know we're in the group chat and, and one of our friends put the video out and he said hey trump just got shot and i i pull up fox news to confirm and yep lo and behold trump was shot automatically in my mind i go where's my stuff and like you know do i have the stuff ready just in case things because at that point we didn't know the full extent of because let's be honest if trump like we've seen the videos too of the angle of his head. These could have gotten really, really bad in in our like we said in our group chats also, like an inch away, things could have gotten really, really scary in our our nation fast. Uh so Johnny, did you rethink your your setup, your top five at all because of the uh, situation? No, I, I, again, I don't want to give anything too much away because uh because that episode may be next week, but uh we were talking about if the poop hits the fan, what we were bringing. No, I'm not rethinking anything. I've got my crap dialed in. I'm not out wishy-washy in California scrolling on my phone going, I don't want to change and adapt. The president got shot, so I'm going to adapt. I'm a chameleon. I'm a presidential getting shot in the face chameleon. I'm changing up. I have okay. been years dialing so you in. You and your can phone. opener. You you and your can opener were ready. You you had that can uh, opener ready, and you I were ready to go. This morning. I'm ready to go right now. You 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 give me you give me the crisis. I'm ready. Okay. These colors right, don't Jared, run. <laughs> Jared, what did you think? I mean, what was going? Th- I mean, I'm curious, really, what was going through your guys' mind? Because I was having conversations with my wife and my family, and I was telling her, like, when I told her, I was like, Trump was just shot, and she she thought I was lying. I was like, no, literally, Trump was just shot. And we, you know, I was checking, turned on the TV, and we were like, okay, this is this is scary. This is what we were all kind of fearing worst case scenario, uh, Jerry, what was going through your mind? Like what, what, um, what were you well, thinking? <clears throat> once, 
But when he was down for that, whatever, 30 seconds or so, um, you didn't, I didn't know how, yeah. how bad this, this was, right? He had lost his shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get my shoes. Let me get but, my shoes. Uh, for a couple seconds there, like what flashed to, in my mind was like, are we, are we at the point where people are going to react to this violently in the streets? Are yeah. people going to, you know, go at it like the ultra left and the ultra right? Are they going to start, you know, like battling out like Lord of the Rings style? Um, that's what I thought immediately. And then obviously when he got up and he was looking for his shoes, you, you kind of realize that he has a mental facu faculties with him. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, then I was just worried about like, are, is there a second shooter and why is he still in the kill box and why is his head still unprotected? And just because of that's crap I used to have to worry about. So that, it's uh, for a couple of seconds there, it was, uh, uh, there was a potential for things to go really, really bad. If that bullet and holy smokes, I saw, I saw another one yesterday that was just showing the seconds and it, 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 mm -hmm. it had shown where his head was like 0.25 second before he yeah. got, before his ear got blowed up. If that medulla oblongata had gone, and that's a bad place to get shot, of all the places to get shot in your body, your medulla oblongata is probably the worst because you you ragdoll, you're down, you don't even twit, you, there's no shaking, you're gone. I think all stick aside. I think we we would have had blood in the streets that night. I think it would, and I, I don't think the sky is falling. I think the sky fell decades ago. I think there would have been a serious reaction now. Coming out of that, there's a major decision to make, and this may be the most important thing we talk about all day. Anthony, Trump's got his ear blowed up, kapow, looking like a Vander Holyfield. Things are gone. Things are splattered. I am going to say this. He either can go just get that thing just gnawed up with a piece of kite string and just get the blood stopped and just rock the worst scar you've ever seen, some haggard looking ear or go to a really nice French manicurist slash slash plastic surgeon and get that ear completely reconstructed. He can either go perfect reconstruction or go badass John Wayne scar. I'm saying John Wayne scar, rock that thing forever. Make that be part of the candidacy. Anthony, what you got? Which scar? Yeah. Rock, rock the scar. Rock the scar. It's he literally took a bullet for the country. Rock it. Um, yeah. Evander Holyfield. It. I mean, like you said, it, it now is going to become part of the brand that, like uh, Johnny, you had said, you know, that picture is probably going to win a Pulitzer, like or whatever. I mean, it's 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 part of the brand now, and it's going to be part of the campaign, and it's it's going to be part of the history of America now. So I think you rock it. You don't you don't mess with that. However gnarled it is, run it. I wondered when it happened, I had just pulled into our cigar lounge and my son texted me Trump shot. And I said, okay, and he's plugged in. And so when he says Trump shot, I'm not doing, I'm like, I'm, Trump's been shot. Mm -hmm. I believe, and I've been time stamping and I've been following everything. I think I had the first meme up in the country. The second they said he was shot, I pulled up my phone and started making a meme. And I found he was shot. And then, then within 12 seconds, probably just his ear. I'm like, all right, now we're good to go. Like it was literally within 40 seconds. Trump's been shot, probably just his ear. And as soon as I felt that relief, just his ear to the memes and and not to be cute, not to be ha ha, but that's where we're at in this country. I th and people people say this regularly. They find out their news from memes. Somebody hit me with something today. Hey, did you hear this? I'm like, yeah, I saw a meme about it. Is it true? Jared, where are you at? I'm saying the memes played a major point and major part in the discussion and the pushing of the narrative of the Trump shot in the face. Yeah. And if the only other thing that probably superseded the memes was Twitter or X, uh, yeah. that thing was flying with information. And then you had, uh, well, you can have a written meme. Like it doesn't have to be a photo. It can, uh, you know, content, a one line is a meme that takes on a life of its own. I'm sorry that I think X did better than your meme. I'm sorry. You think X did better than my meme? Yeah. I'm my sorry. meme was on X. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing what I can here. I have no scars to show. All Thank of my you for scars your service. Are, yeah. All of my scars are on the inside. They're all emotional. I'm saying that that uh, I, I said something. I told you guys because we were talking the whole night. I didn't look up for my phone for literally six hours. Yeah. For six yeah. hours, from six thirty to twelve thirty, I sat there, smoked cigars, and just just we and we all we talked. I mean, there was thousands of messages went around that yeah. day. I predicted this within an hour. That picture is going to win the Pulitzer. That's going to be around. I think our kids will see that picture in in books. I don't know if they're going to be history books by that point because who knows what they're going to do with civics classes. 
but I think this is a a watershed moment. I think it's we we don't know. We're a week a week out. How does this end up? How does this play out? We don't know, Anthony. We have no idea what that gunshot's actually going to produce in the days ahead. Yeah, yeah it's it's still evolving, and we're still getting information. I mean, we're one additional bombshell information like release. I mean, we don't we don't know what's coming. To Johnny's point, I think memes are a great source of news. I'm not serving in the meme war as aggressively as Johnny, uh, but you know, I definitely get memes, and I, I agree with Jared though. I think. The information on Twitter and X that was flying. The videos were all over there. That was that was going and the reporting. Um, but I do think maybe in the, in the future memes are going to be part of the history because I think it's an important piece of context. Just like art in the past was kind of an important piece of you know historical context. I think now memes in certain videos and that type of stuff that goes around on social media is going to be really important. But it's been funny in my social group, our social group, I, was, I should say, is that. I am starting to see in the last six months to a year, I am starting to see we're hanging out, we're talking, we're drinking a Coca-Cola, we're laughing. Hey, did you see this? Hey, did you see that? Over the last six months, more and more, and really in the last week, hey, did y'all see that one meme that said this? And this one is, yeah, I saw that meme, but did you see? And we're verbalizing, we're, mm -hmm. we're telling this orally. We're talking about memes that are actually becoming the part of the conversation. And, you know, the idea is not, oh, Johnny loves memes. It's that Johnny loves narrative. Johnny loves when when things and our, our and mythology is created. And also memes are all shared experience. All memes are is me to go, hey, this is my life. And you go, oh, my gosh, that's my life, too. I agree with that. It's all every meme is just saying, hey, do you agree with this? Uh, it's maybe a, yeme, a meme about a yapping wife, and the husband's like, ah, oh, wah, wah. And, but every dude can go and go, oh, my Lord, my wife, that's, that's totally my wife. Somebody sent me one today, like, oh, my Lord, here's my kids. And it's this idea, and here's my point. Memes are really about people going, that's me, or that's my mom. Oh, my gosh, those are my kids. Hey, this is you. This is totally you. And it's a way of connecting with each other. I think this, I think moving forward, I think we're at this point now, let me say it this way, is that the news no longer speaks for us. The White House is full of freaking liars. Washington is a cesspool of filth and grifters. We can't, we can barely trust each other. And we don't have a voice in media anymore. I don't see, I'm red-blooded American. I mean, holy smokes, I screamed Wolverine when Red Dawn came on. And I watched Rocky go up that hill in Rocky Four carrying that log in Siberia. It was amazing. I love freaking America. We got a little red, white, and blue truck right here. Toot, toot. But I really believe this in that we have a, we're in a time now where nobody speaks for us. I don't have a voice. Memes are a way for me to reach across and, and, and lock hands and arm in arm with other people and say, that's me. For somebody just to say, the left is a bunch of freaking bullcrap, lizard skin, Satan worshiping liars. And I can go, USA, USA is still working. My point, Jared, and tell me what you think, is that memes are a way for us to hear a voice that sounds like ours because our voice is gone from media. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Absolutely. It's uh, it's an empowering way for people who can express their feeling or their belief through, you know, a, a picture that's not as frowned upon nowadays in society. Anthony, yeah, where you, think, with you said you're not part of the meme war. I, I think you do your part. You fight your fight. You're out there. I you're doing your part. I fight for my fight. I do my part. I do my part. Um, I think it's it's funny uh, two things I realized kind of during that whole situation, I guess, about social media. One, I think mainstream media, and they are so slow now in the amount of information that they get out. It is so behind, like you would get something on on X and then 30 minutes later, Fox News would confirm it. And it's like, yeah, we that's like that was 30 minutes ago. Like try to catch up here. Um, and then the other thing was kind of going back to one of the points Johnny made like how unhealthy it was to be on my phone. I felt like crap after mm -hmm. those like six hours, just like that constant, just feed on X and all the other social media sites. Like I, that was probably the most time I spent on my phone in recent history, like consecutively for long. Like I don't, I just like hours were gone, just staring at my phone. Um, so that's kind of what I, I gathered from that situation. But yeah, I, I agree, Johnny. I think the media stuff is way behind and, uh, 
memes and and all that you know secondary uh, what they consider secondary media or whatever is so much more important now because we got information way faster than mainstream media could get to us let's wrap this up here um this is something and, and correct me if i'm wrong i think this is something that we'll always remember when we're you know sitting in a chair at our 80th birthday and say i can remember where i was when donald trump was shot just like i can say i remember where i was when you know the, the towers were hit and then i remembered um, you think so were you put on that level here's and it's an attempted I assassination of a president allegedly i had the thought sitting in my and i remember i remember where i was maybe maybe i'm making your point for you i was sitting in my green car and my son goes trump's been shot and i just go to town and i thought i went inside uh, to our cigar lounge, lit up the cigar, was talking to the guys, and uh, everybody's just in and out, in and out, in and out. You were live on YouTube. I went live on YouTube also. We were live at the same time. And I thought that night, I had the thought, is this going to be one of those, where were you when it happened? And I dismissed it, Jared. I went, no, there's no way. There's no way we're, we're having one of these in real time. You're saying this is it. I had the thought. I think I think you proved my point because the first thing you're going to say when you're 80 is, I had the first meme in the country. Anthony, what about you? <laughs> I did not have the first meme in the country. Uh, I'm about to rage quit this show. <laughs> it's about to be the Liberty Lounge minus one. It's going to be the two of these knuckleheads trying to trying to sit here and giggle with each other. I'm about done. I'm like a strike two today. Thank you for my service. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Johnny, for your service. <laughs> You may leave now. <laughs> you are dismissed. <laughs> um, no, I think I think it can be. Um, I think the the only hesitation I have with that is how fast we now move on in society. Like now, the conversation. Yes, we're still dealing with the Trump Trump assassination stuff, and right now, as we're filming this, we're coming off the RNC stuff. But now the conversation, and which maybe will come out by the time this is released, now the conversation is flipped to: Is Biden dropping out? And what mm -hmm. is that going to look like? You know, so, uh, information is moving so fast right now in our nation. And, and who, I mean, my bingo card might hit. All of a sudden, aliens might reveal themselves fully, fully. And then maybe the government's going to say, yeah, hey, guys, we have aliens. Look over here. I don't know. They were shopping in, um, shopping in Miami already. Yeah, they're shopping. I'm not, shopping. I'm, not, I'm not jumping into this. I know the answers to the aliens. I know the answers to the Miami situation. I know that they have already revealed themselves. I'm not by Not today, Satan. We're not doing it. Make the freaking frogs gay. <laughs> Make the frogs gay. The freaking water. Uh, Johnny knows because he is the alien. Um, but yeah, I don't know. He could be. Could Johnny, he could be the alien. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it, it can be. I think um, I'm going to remember and I'm going to remember the group text and the friend that that said, Hey, Trump was shot and all of us, you know, and then just the conversation, the string of conversations and the Twitter feed and all the stuff that's developed. And obviously it's, it's migrating into some of our content now because we're all doing videos on it and the impacts of that. And I think it's going to have very clear downstream, you know, impacts on where our nation goes from here. And it's going to impact the, the presidential race now. And, and I think it put even more pressure on, them trying to get Biden out. And I, you know, I know Jared, you did a video on that recently, pretty much that they're trying to force him out here within the next, you know, three or four days, something like that. So, um, yeah. Where were you when the world stopped spinning when Trump got, <laughs> got shot? Now we just, really, we just need the, we need a song. We need a song just like nine 11. We need the song. Like, where were you when the world stopped spinning? We need that for Trump's ear. We need a dedicated song, and then it will be one of those memorable events. I smell an Oscar or a Grammy. I smell a Grammy with this one, Anthony. Yeah. We'll get back to you on that one. That's, that sounds fantastic. What a great idea. We'll take that under consideration. Yeah. <laughs> Holy okay, smokes. meme I, wars. <laughs> can opener. <laughs> I think that it's, it's just fascinating for me that, and because I made that connection almost instantly with, within, within 30 minutes, like, oh my gosh, is this one of those moments? Because it was kind of, it was kind of surreal. And we don't have a guide in this. There's no playbook. There's no now. Here's what happened. I remember uh, when when my mom passed, feeling this like extreme. What's next? I need an adult to tell me what to do next. I like okay. You do this, and you do this, and you do this. And I think after Trump got got shot, I, I felt that same feeling. I'm like, oh gosh, who's in charge? Who's in charge? somebody's in charge and it's because you think Trump's kind of in charge because he's all boisterous and he's like, mm, ha, ha, and he's like so strong and such a strong personality. And then he's laying on the ground. He stands up and he's bloody. 
who's in charge around here? And I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm starting to think nobody is. And everybody is the same. Like there's a lot like, the, you know, you've got all the CEOs that we talked about a few episodes ago. You've got some people inside D.C. You've got some people in the World Economic Forum. You've got some of the lizard people, some of the billionaires, and they are all together locked in with this tangly web of nonsense saying, how much can I steal from this country? And I just felt for a little bit, who's, who's in charge? Jared, did you have a moment of helplessness? CIA has entered the chat. That's who's running everything. You C- think so? Is CIA. CIA? We're doing CIA today? CIA, BlackRock. <laughs> They're, that they're was the best meme. I, I will say that's the best meme. Like, why would we need circuit circuit secret service on the roof if CIA was already up there? Yeah, why that was, the was one... not on the roof. Uh, the CIA already was. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> if I was to have told y'all a week ago, Trump's going to get uh, wounded, shot in the face next week. Who was the shooter? What the shooter look like? I think we all would have said, oh, I don't know, probably some uh, sort of skinny, uh, alienated, greasy-haired, pimple-faced weirdo who's probably on some sort of psychotropic medication who was already, and this is true, on the FBI watch list, but they didn't do anything. And his classmates go, "Ah, he's kind of quiet, kind of weird, kind of a weird dude. And his parents are like, is this is it too obvious at this point, Anthony, who they're who they are choosing for their operations? If I'm saying if this was a CIA operation, are they getting a little obvious in who they're picking? Yeah, I think that's what I was saying. Like the smell test, like people are just not like maybe the the curtain has been lifted too much. It's just some of the stuff like the playbook, it's almost too obvious now. And we've been talking about Biden dropping out of the race. It's just like all the dominoes are kind of falling. Like we were. We were worried for a long time about someone trying to take a shot at at Trump because of the rhetoric and all the stuff going around. And it's just like one thing happening after another. You just in some ways, you just have to believe there's just the puppet master up there just trying to do all this stuff. And I don't I think uh, it is concerning. And the only thing I think we could we said, you know, in our preparedness is just be prepared. Um, I guess pay attention to the memes and the news and prepare for the worst, hope for the best. <laughs> really, that's it. And get your can openers. <laughs> I'm going to keep beating you up about the can opener. <laughs> Till he's staring down a can of green beans. <laughs> green beans. Uh, I think the the words of the day today is hate. I hate both of y'all equally. And uh, we, are, we are fired up here. How did I get to be the punching bag? I'm normally the puncher, not the punchy. And that's fantastic. What I love about today in this conversation is, and this just gets my heart percolating. Some instantly, when you say the president's been shot, within three days, we're talking about aliens and how this ties in with all sorts of government bull crap. The bot, and I love the alien stuff. I love all that stuff. There's other people that are more into, oh, I don't know, Operation Mockingbird, Operation Northwoods. How about the fact that the government shot a 10 year old in the back of the head at Ruby Ridge? How about et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, Waco, and all of that? Regardless of which one you go down, it's yet another brick in the wall that we don't trust the government. Yeah, rightfully so. We should never trust the government, ever. <laughs> Their whole. Their whole reason for being is to limit us in some way. They were originally they were supposed to just handle. I they were supposed affairs. to like promote promote the general welfare and provide for the common defense. Or I got that backwards. But I thought they were you supposed mean, to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. You know the thing. You know the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we've moved away from that a little bit. You think so? A little bit. A lot. Yeah. Bit. I think if anything, this showed just like the cracks. I think everybody's seeing more and more cracks. In I mean, I don't. It's in, in some ways, it's concerning. Like where we go from here. Like if people are taking shots at presidential candidates and former presidents and our system is breaking down so much that that can actually happen you know where do we go from here and it's going to be it's getting spicy as johnny would say the next few months are are going to be interesting to see what else you know happens on the bingo cards so there are more rabbits in the hat that are going to be pulled out it is not going to be a smooth summer the rest of the summer is going to be bumpy i think the fall is going to be a mess i think we all can agree that it's not over by the time this even airs who knows what the frick is going to even be going on it's going to be a wild ride the memes are going to be fire who knows what's going to happen in the future on behalf of Jared, Guns and Gadgets, and Anthony the Arm Scholar, we're all along for the meme ride. I'm Johnny B, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>